thank you so much for some of you if you have questions for me i will bring them up on the screen like that like so um along the way if you have an answer that i that stands out to me i'll put it on there as well so here we go without further delay let's grab our headphones and let's be on our way and uh if you're ready to go familia all we need to do is press play i'm so excited i am excited could you hear that let me know if you can hear that okay Give me a thumbs up or some emoji to, to tell me. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you can hear all of those, that crumbling sound. I just want to make sure that the sound is, is good to go. The first time? No, the first time you were there. Uh-huh. Humor me. Uh, I was out on Andrew's old sloop. I'd had a bad night. At first, I didn't even know it was him. Remember? <laughs> I thought he was a Roman, about to ruin my life. <laughs> and what happened next? It was at the moment when I thought my career and my reputation were about to be destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Laughter is so contagious. Philip just said, come and see. Ah. Uh, and I did. This is a new face to me. And, Isn't it? Look, I, I don't know how to describe it other than... He knew me before he knew me. <laughs> oh, oh, chills. I was standing next to John the baptizer. What? Creepy John. <laughs> <laughs> Cre and he walked by, like out of nowhere. And John freaked out. He said, Behold, I'm eating a new bug. <laughs> <laughs> he was just sitting there. Lunch with all the construction workers, cracking jokes. I was uh, on my way to Jerusalem. I'm sorry. All of this is just, uh, it's difficult to talk about. Huh. Yeah, it uh, reminds me of how much I miss him. But we have to. I know. It just. I talk about him to others every day, but uh, it's difficult with all of you. It's, it's different with all of you. Mm. Just tell me about the first time you actually saw him. It was in a tavern. <laughs> he set his hand on mine. Which isn't what it sounds like. Maybe leave that part out, people. I'll get confused. I don't know yet what I will be including. Wow, censoring herself. Just writing it all down. Mm. It was the fourth morning of the third week of the month of Adar. Sometime during the second hour. <laughs> you don't have to be precise. <laughs> What's Why going on? Why need to be precise? Mine will be precise. <laughs> My answer may not make sense. Try me, mother. I can hardly remember a time when I didn't know him. Mm. There's one little kick. Go on. My son, why are you doing all this? Why now? Because we're getting older and our memories are... I mean, why now? During Shiva. Because everyone is here. Mm. I need to get their memories. You need to mourn Big James. He won't be the last of us this happens to. Who knows when I will see the others again, or if. I'm not in a hurry to write a whole book, but 
I do want to get the eyewitness stories now, while we're together. Okay. Isn't Matthew going to write something? He's only writing about what he saw and about what Jesus told him directly. Mm -hmm. But I was there for things that Matthew doesn't know about. I was in his inmost circle. He loved me. He loved all of you. <laughs> you just feel the need to talk about it more often. Mm. I prefer to treasure these things in my heart. Mm. You know that if you tried to write every single thing he did, the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. <laughs> Can I get an amen mm. to that on the live chat, a please? Disclaimer. <laughs> That's good, I'm going to say that. You see, Mother, if I do not write these things down, they will be lost to history. James would agree. Mm. Where will you start? In the beginning, naturally. I'm just, um, not sure which beginning. <laughs> which, be Early. which beginning? His ancestry? I'm pretty sure Matthew has that covered. But... <laughs> Maybe the prophecies, the promise to Abraham. I thought about starting with Abraham, but still so much came before him. What was before Abraham? Noah. And before him? A garden. A garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could start there. But I wanted to be known that he was much more than what can be seen or, or touched. What was before the garden? In the beginning, the earth was formless and void. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Cue the thunder and lightning. Cannot hear it without thinking of you too. I cannot believe how much he put up with others. They will not even remember the sound of his voice. Mm. They'll just be words. <laughs> he said they weren't just words, remember? Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never, never pass, pass away. away. Mm. They're eternal. Ah, oh, so many questions already about little things, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off. I uh, think of something. Take your time. <laughs> I'm off to bed. Staring at the void. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Sounds like wind in the water. <laughs> Come on, Fumbi. A quick shout out to all of you who are watching on the on the live chat. Quick shout out to all of you. Please keep the comments loving and respectful, as I know you will. Um, I will have some questions coming up soon. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us live. If anybody wants to offer a prayer so that this these uh, these episodes can give us the message that were intended, please feel free to offer the prayer on the live chat. I was not able to catch up on season one, to be honest. I, I'm just I'm gonna I'm probably gonna need a recap. But this is what's beautiful here. We're we're having a conversation together and we're watching together. So I'm depending on all of you to catch me up. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Get this 
Ooh. This is the part where uh, man will have to work at the I ground, right? The hold after a long weekend. You drink for a month. I'd rather mend every hole in Abba's sails. <laughs> and probably sew your hands together in the process. Yeah. I would rather wrestle a swordfish. <laughs> <laughs> Just get in the water with it. I meant on the hook. <laughs> on the hook. But I'd snatch it out of the water with my bare hands if it meant not spending a night with these people. You know it has a sword on its face, right? <laughs> we locked out, brother. Planting this field while the others tried to keep up with Rabbi and Sikar. <laughs> it wasn't luck. He chose us. You're going two thumbs deep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rows three hundreds apart. So why do you think he did that? We're good workers. And maybe he knows we don't like Samaritans. <sighs> maybe Jesus just likes us best? Yes. That must be it. So why do you think he likes me best? For the same reasons I like you best. You pose no threat to anyone, intellectually or physically. Thank you, brother. Wait a second. What I want to know is who are we planting this for? He said it would feed generations. I assume travelers, people passing through like us. Hospitality isn't just for those with homes, John. <laughs> Don't quit your day job. Too late for that. <laughs> yeah, me too. The Come humor on, is so up. brilliant. I don't want to lose this job. I would rather talk with Matthew for a whole minute. I'd rather listen to Andrew's jokes. <laughs> Sekar is on the other side of Mantila. That's brilliant. And the map says to head southward along the east side. The map, wow. It could be this fork taking us towards Shiloh. This left could be too early. That's a theory. It's a fact that we must veer south, because if we keep going westward, we'll encounter the hostile city it's of Sebastopol. It's faster to go between Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. But more dangerous. Not if we avoid the cities. There's no avoiding cities on a road. That's what roads do, they connect <laughs> cities. You're not taking my daughter off-road. Gaffney, I have given you my word that I will protect Rayma from harm. Can you even protect yourself? With due respect. You are walking towards Samaria to find a group of men you do not know. And a woman. A woman who would be with a group of men. Do not talk back to me, young lady. Mm. This is foolishness. Maybe they know the way. Shalom. Hey, what are you doing talking to our mother? Jew? Tranquilo, man. <laughs> Thaddeus right. counted 50 in the square, with more arriving every minute. Is Jesus ready? Yeah, he's in his room. He needed a moment alone. Yeah. Well, there are many begging to hear more. He's been talking to people since dawn. He needs a break. I'll bring him some water. I thought most people had left after the first sermon. Yeah, they left to go get their family and friends, and now they're back threefold. The population of Sikar is approximately 2,000. Not including women and children. There are 12 hours of light per day at this time of year. And he said that we would stay here for two days, which means over 24 hours, the number of men we need to reach per hour is 83.33333333. At yeah, what's point oh, three what three that? of a man, Matthew? Simon. There's a crowd going out there, and we need to decide what to do. Why don't we just tell him the situation and let him decide? That's what he's going to do anyway. I'll tell him. How many stadia wide is the city? <laughs> I brought you some water and to... Hey, gown. Rabbi? <laughs> Rabbi? It will give us a rubric of how many square cubits we need to reach per hour. I guess, I guess he decides if he has a break, cubits right? Cubits per hour? <laughs> His ministry deserves careful thought. No one's thinking about it more carefully than me. Wow. He's gone. What do you think? <laughs> He's not in his room or anywhere in the house. I checked the alley. We lost him? He's probably not lost. Okay, James. He searched the southern side. Andrew and I will search the north. Tell Thaddeus to keep an eye on the crowd. What about me? Stay here, in case he comes back. I will be back soon, and I won't be far. 
staying here gives me the greatest likelihood of locating Jesus first. <laughs> there you go. It seems like they're like battling each other, right? Like who's loved the most, who knew the most, who was the closest? Humans. <laughs> Music is perfect. Have you seen the tissue from the guy lately? The man who arrived here yesterday. He was in the square. Hey, my master. About yay high. No, no. Beard. <laughs> About yay high. Beard. Hey. There was almost every man there at the time. The, the one called Jesus of Nazareth. Has he passed this way? Have you seen the teacher of Jesus? You wouldn't have it to have seen the teacher of this way. He passed by earlier. The teacher? Yes, but is he going to be back in the town square? He's on an errand. Where did he go? Uh, down towards that alley. But I, I was just about to go see him again and bring my friend. He's not teaching again? He'll be there. He'll teach more. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Probably a water pump yeah. that's damaged underneath there. Hold tight and <laughs> So it was the axle. I told my brother it was the axle. Sometimes all you need is a fresh set of eyes. Mm. I'll hand me some pitch and it'll be as good as new. Sometimes all you need is a fresh set of eyes. You're good at this. You should stay in town and open up a shop. <laughs> should I? Mm -hmm. A shop? Yeah, hey, I know her. <laughs> that woman is going to introduce you to every Samaritan in the country. I hope so. <laughs> Hot. I'm going to pause it right here really quickly and just make a quick uh, comment. Because um, that stayed with me. All, sometimes all you need is just a fresh set of eyes right that we may look at something for so long we think we know it we, we 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 look at it we study it inside and out for so long that we get lost in it and sometimes we let go of the very foundation or the very basic um teaching of of, of something and sometimes it just takes a new set of eyes right like he came and he was like wait a minute you guys are looking at everything wrong like Yes, the laws are important, but let's also look at this. So he sort of came in to give everybody a new set of eyes, uh, right? Like a fresh, a fresh look at what they've all, what they were already accustomed to. Just wanted to make that quick comment. Sorry, my mouse is a little slow. All right, here we go. Continue. <laughs> he was disappointed. Shalom. I don't know you. Maybe you're in the wrong place. I did. I did. We are looking for Jesus. <laughs> Everyone is. <laughs> oh, you're here. Thomas and Rema, yes? Yes. Mary? Good memory. <laughs> so good to have you. It's good to see you again, Mary. <laughs> This is Rema's father, Kafni. <laughs> Where is everyone? They're out looking for Jesus. Oh, is he lost? He He's lost the Messiah. Lost. Probably they just need <laughs> the moment. The townspeople have been clamoring to see him. He's been changing many hearts. I know how that works. So. Your friend wasn't just being rude. Oh, uh, Thomas, this is Matthew. Matthew, Thomas. You approached a strange home, and when the occupant answered, you said, I don't know you. Is that being rude? <laughs> <laughs> we had a brutal journey. It wasn't easy finding this place. And the Samaritans thought we'd be torn apart. Samaritans and Jews are historical enemies. I'm aware. We knew the journey would be fraught, but it's like he's actively trying to make it difficult to follow him. I just want to thank him for saving the reputation of my vineyard. Uh, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang <laughs> is, on. Uh, is Jesus making it actively difficult to follow? <laughs> is 
is it? I'm sorry, that line just stood out a lot, and I, I don't have to go back. Sorry. Not that you care Wait. about that. Oh, I can't go back like I used to look. Okay, sorry, I'll pay attention. <laughs> I'm glad we found you, at least. But why aren't you... I stayed. It's likely he'll return to the last place he was seen. A little farther from the city is what I was going to say. But what do you base that on? Isn't it most likely that he's gone on to his next appointment? He does not keep a schedule. No. Perhaps I can be useful as an organizer then. I'm good with figures, times. Precision is my specialty. Oh? Oh? <laughs> <laughs> to see you again. Glad you are here. Oh, sorry. It's uh, been a long day. <laughs> we were working. Because we know that God pursues <laughs> the sick Here we go. more than the healthy. Think of it this way. Are there any uh, sheep herders in the crowd? I am. Ah, welcome. We are honored you are here. I have a very warm place in my heart for shepherds. Who is tending your flock now? My brother. We're taking turns. How many sheep? Uh, one hundred, teacher. Say one of them goes astray. What do you do? I'd go look for it, of course. With, with reckless course. love. Eh? But eh? What about the other 99? <laughs> I'd have to leave them behind. I can't lose the one sheep. Hmm. And if you find it? I'd lay it over my shoulders and bring it home. And I would probably do a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say to your friends who are worried for you? Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Do you see what he just said there? He rejoices more for one sheep than over the 99 who never went astray. So it is not the will of my father that one of these should perish. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Well, look at them. I couldn't tell Jew from Samaritan the way they're listening. Did you see the woman and the little girl, though? I know Simon did. Yeah, I always get emotional. You think you won't? Right? Then, shalom. <laughs> hey, you came through. <laughs> you made it. Of course he did, Thomas. <laughs> it's good to see you. You too, Rabbi. You remember Rema? How could I forget? So you will be joining us also. And the dad doesn't get introduced. <laughs> This is my father. <laughs> oh, yes. The owner of the vineyard that produced such fine wine for my friends. Shalom. Very kind of you to say. I imagine you want to speak with me, yes? If you have some time, I would like to ask you some questions. You wouldn't be a good father if you didn't. Here's what I'd like to propose, if you approve. Hmm. We've both had very long days, yes. This establishment has rooms available for you, so why don't we get some rest? And tomorrow morning, we talk about everything. Sound good? Mm. I... Very respectful. I'm, I suppose we could. It's a plan. Thank you. We are delighted that you are with us. Now, if you'll all excuse me for a moment, I must go speak with a couple of men who performed a truly remarkable act of service today. Let us escape, <laughs> Rabbi. If you like. They all step up like... That was beautiful. What happened? I was just telling everybody the work that you boys did today. How remarkable it was. You must be famished. <laughs> I guess um, we were hungry. <laughs> Eat. Restore your strength. 
And when you're done, please describe the work to the others. I hope everyone takes note of what John and Big James did here. Good night, friends. Hmm. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. I don't know any more than you. Jesus gave them an errand and said, come with. I don't get it either. They describe moving stones and digging. Are they leaders now? I don't know. It didn't sound that much harder than fishing, but... I have never performed hard labor. Guess you'll just have to tag along like the rest of us. The list of things he might do is long. First, there's a leper colony to the west, and they're begging him to come. They're not allowed into the city, so they have no way to hear him. Both Jewish and Samaritan purity laws forbid coming within four cubits of a leper. What distance do we have to keep from these Samaritans? We've been within four cubits of a leper before, Andrew. I'm just saying, if he breaks the law, it might cause a stir. And for dinner, we've been invited to the home of the town treasure. And we have to juggle that invitation with another one to have dinner at the home of the high priest of Sikar. Which could get messy, huh? Why messy? Samaritan beliefs are so at odds with Jewish belief. He might want to trap Jesus in his words. Don't think he's afraid of being trapped by his words. I'm just saying. We could be somewhere else with people who actually want to listen to him and not argue. If he convinces the rabbi of the town, his message would be preached long after we leave this village. Let's leave it to the boss, eh? <laughs> what do you think? Dinner at the treasure or the high priest? Neither. Dinner with whom then? You know, there are a lot of people who want to talk to him. Yes, but. He wants to make dinner. That's the errand. Man. What? That's the errand? Yeah. You guys are really enjoying this being in the know, huh? <laughs> Coming from you, Simon. What does that mean? He told us his plans. So. <laughs> Matthew, <laughs> distribute the money accordingly. Thaddeus, buy bread. Enough for 12, 13 people. Leaven, unleavened rice, sprouted spill. Uh, assortment, your choice. 13? Who are the others? Little James, buy a leg of lamb, including the knuckle and the filet. In, no, no, two, two legs of lamb. We only have... Andrew, grapes, currants, cherries. Cherries, if you can find them. At this rate, we will not have enough for... At the start of this trip, we didn't expect to find a bag of gold, did we? We're putting it to good use. Simon. Yes, master. Wow. Three skins of wine. Done. Matthew, black pepper, chives. <laughs> Salt, olive oil. At this cost, we will not make it to Judea. Have faith, Matthew. Mm. In him. <laughs> Mary, look for leeks, <laughs> garlic, and onions. Okay? And what are you guys gonna do? We are going to get out of the streets. Why? Samaria's biggest problem. Too many Samaritans. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay, really quick pause. Um, one of the things that I noticed here is that yeah, it seems like they're all they all seem to be in competition with each other, and there's this big importance to know. Like they want to know everything, every single little detail, and it appears like Christ is or Jesus is is keeping it very vague for a very specific reason, right? And so right now they're hating these two gentlemen who were working all day and they're like, wait a minute, we've been helping you. We've been tending to everything. You know, we've been at your, at your feet. And yet for some reason you call their work important. The ones that were digging the ground, the ones that were pushing seeds into the ground, like that's important work, you know? And so they're, they're conflicted. They're confused. Like, how is that more important than what we've been doing for you specifically directly here, serving you, you know, tending to everything that you want, like everything that you need practically. And uh, there's, so now, now they let all these weapons out, right? Sarcasm and cynicism and just like these scorn and, and all the things that come along with, with, uh, with, well, with not liking someone or, or, engaging in this thing called competition with with one another right <laughs> i love it. It, it that was that was a great scene look at these colors are beautiful yeah uh, three skins of wine please oh, what kind red something with uh cloves i guess simon 
There you are. I've been looking for all of you. Yeah, lucky for you, we're all in this market. Well, what are you doing? Is he going to teach here? Just shopping, if you can believe it. This man, <laughs> he told me everything, everything you I ever did. did. Yes, we've heard him for ourselves. Because of his words, we believe he is the anointed one. You don't have to keep telling us what we know. Here. No, I only need three. It's on the house. Anything for him. Thank you. Simon, I need you to deliver that's, the That's dangerous. See, uh, real quickly, it, it's a, it, that could be a dangerous thing, right? So now he's getting a taste of people giving, giving extra. And if he's not too careful, then the sort of expectation that, hey, he's, he's the Messiah. So, you know, if you want to throw in something extra, uh, go ahead, you know? So, but you could see it in his eyes. He was like, wait a minute, you're throwing something free? And it was kind of uncomfortable. And if it's not uh, proceed with caution, then... <laughs> then uh, it could turn into something bad. It, it's good though, but but <laughs> he has to self-regulate. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so serious. Everyone? Yes. But there's 10 of us. Please. Okay. Sorry, Abba. It was a busy morning. I'll make you some porridge. What do you think he's doing? I just need a few moments with him. Mm, he said it was a short walk. I'm sure mm. he'll be here soon, Abba. I have things to say. You're lucky I even came all this way with you. I could have just decided no. Mm. I can't decide what Thomas does. He can make his own bad decisions, but you. I have things to say. I know. And I'm very grateful. <laughs> Porridge. Soon you will know every way to make it. Because that is what you eat when you don't have a job or live with your family. Gaffney, good morning. Thank you for your patience. I had a few people to meet before our important talk. Thank you for your you patience. Were you comfortable last night? Yes, although I must say I didn't sleep very well. Mm. I know what it's like to be concerned about someone you feel responsible for, but I am not a father. I imagine all of this makes you nervous. Could pa we... Pacing him, sure. understanding him first. Making him aware that he's, he understands his concerns. Before he even addresses Allow me to first say why I am here. I want to thank you for whatever you did at the wedding. You kept the reputation of my business and of my daughter and Thomas from suffering. Hmm. Rema and Thomas have insisted that you performed a miracle. Now, I am an old man. I need to leave for my journey and I do not have time to be unclear. Hmm. I believe this to be the edge of blasphemy. And I am not in the habit of believing a man from Nas... Mm -hmm. A man... performed a miracle. And I am not in the habit of giving my blessing for my daughter to leave our home. But... I am in your debt. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are in this room with you now. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. I cannot give you my belief or my devotion. So I'm afraid my honesty is all I have left to give after giving up my daughter. Oh man, that's hard. <laughs> I understand. <clears throat> I ask a lot of those who follow me, but I ask little of those who do not. Ooh. I don't want to be rude, but I have said all I want to say. Oh, man. <clears throat> that was an excellent conversation. I'm probably going to break that down in a separate video because that was that conversation was brilliantly executed. I know it's just a show, but the fact that they decided to go about it in this way was just brilliant.
Absolutely brilliant. Look at him. That was the face of empathy, by the way, Familia. He felt that man's pain. He understood it. He didn't want to change it. Thomas. One more moment. I have long admired you for your hard work. And you have done well in spite of the loss of your father. But this is foolishness. And I won't pretend it isn't. Mm. I will see you next when you ask for my daughter's hand. Kafni, I... No. I am not stupid. You may be. <laughs> but I am not. Wow. But when that day comes... I don't know what I will say. Keep her safe. Wow. Shalom. The strength to be able to do that without allowing like anger to disrupt that. This is some expert work, my boys. Exceptional. <laughs> you should have seen this place. Weeds and branches piled everywhere. We cleared and sowed it in a single afternoon. So you've told us. <laughs> Somebody salty. <laughs> They see me rolling, uh, they hate it. What are you doing here, Rabbi? <laughs> this is where we'll be dining tonight. Someone lives here. You must be Melech. I am. You're the teacher. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. These are my students. Hey, These are my I students. Owe you a debt of gratitude. I would bow, but uh, as you can see, <laughs> it's John and Big James here that put in the sweat. You own the field? I do. We thought it was for travelers. Okay, so spit it out. What's the catch? Catch? You don't know me from Adam. You're a Jew. You come all the way from Galilee to preach in town. You send your students to work my land. Fortina told us you were in need. Mm -hmm. She told me all about you. So what do you want from me? Nothing? I don't have any money. I can't make a donation to your ministry. Can't even feed my family. Mm. That's what I want. What? Your family. <laughs> no, I would love for you to share a meal with me and my friends. Oh. Yeah, I'm really so very sorry, but uh, we don't have any food. Not even for ourselves. We've got that covered. Please, I would be honored. <laughs> the boat almost flipped. Then the net strained so hard, I thought my arms would come out of their sockets. And James and John took Wait, 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 wait. Let, let's pause there for a second. Usually somebody does something for someone else and they ask them for something. And in this case, he heard that the man was hurt, that he was in need. He sent two of his students to go and work the ground so that he can plant something. Um, the man says, thank you for, for doing that for me, right? So now he feels like he owes him something. And he's like, I'm sorry, but I don't have anything to give you. I don't have money. I don't even have enough money to feed my own family. And he says, well, that's it. Like, all I want is for you to share a moment with me. I want you to sit with me and eat with me. And no, you're not buying lunch. 
because I did this thing for you. This is not a transaction. This isn't a, trans, a transactional thing. I worked it so that you can be better to improve your life, to improve the quality of your life, to give your family like a, a chance at, at surviving here. And all I ask is that you spend a, a, you know, a, an evening having dinner with me, which we will also be providing. <laughs> that come on can, can we get some hearts in the live chat just for that alone like that that's that's a beautiful thing to be able to do something for someone because you can do it right just because you can and to ask nothing in return and if they feel obligated to do something just that they like to do something for you or if they feel obligated unburden them by just telling them okay why don't you just spend an evening with me like just spend some time with me have a conversation because time is precious in that way isn't it uh, but but again, I might just be speaking uh, you know prematurely here in this story because I'm not sure what is up next. I'm not sure if he is going to ask him for something. I don't I don't think that he will because he's he's Christ. He can he has he has it all. Um, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's where that's what it looks like right now. So let's uh, let's continue this story. <laughs> all right. Coming to help us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Yeah, I had to call for help five times before you moved. So you followed him all the way into Sumeria? We did suggest the alternate route along the Jordan. <laughs> you didn't think it could be dangerous for you? Of course. <laughs> <clears throat> When I was a little girl, my father told me the Messiah would bring an end to pain and suffering. If you are who people are saying you are, when will you do that? Mm. I'm here to preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven. A kingdom that is not of this world. A kingdom is coming soon mm. or yes sorrow and sighing will flee away I make a way for people to access that kingdom <laughs> but in this world bones will still break hearts will still break but in the end the light will overcome darkness Ooh. Speaking of broken bones, what's the story? <laughs> uh, wait, a, wait a segue from uh, from her. Her question really was a, a question of of impatience, right? And it's understandable because she's uh, uh, from the brief description she suffered all her life, right? And for a father to tell that to a child, it's 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 uh, it's pretty much preparing the child that life is going to be rough, and life is rough now. But there will be a time where a Messiah will come, and all of that suffering will end. And can you imagine living your entire childhood uh, heartbroken and seeing all of the 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 anger and hatred and the tension between? here Samaritans and, and, and Jews and living out hardship and hungers and, and all that other suffering that comes along with it. And you find, and you finally meet the man who is supposed to be the, the one who brings all of this to a close. And you've already waited so long, right? You've already waited your entire life for this moment. What's another, what's another, moment like what's another few months or what's another year or another lifetime right um and very very wisely he responds that like he's he's there he's here to spread to spread the message of of the good the good message the good word right that the kingdom of heaven so the good message is that the kingdom of heaven is coming soon and that along with it all of all of that suffering will will cease it'll come to to an end right and he very carefully points out that there's still going to be pain there's still going to be pain 
yes, uh, hearts, uh, bones will be broken and, and so will hearts. Hearts will also be broken, meaning that there will be tension or there will still be situations in wh which we will be physically hurt and that there will also be situations where we will be emotionally hurt. Uh, none of that is going to really cease. However, there's still going to be a great calm, a great peace, a great uh, a kingdom that will uh, bring peace, even, even, even amongst those things being present. So I, I just wanted to really briefly touch on that. It's, it's brilliant. Well, I didn't see a pasture. <laughs> Yet uh, it wasn't mine. Ah, a friend's horse. That's always dangerous. No, not, not exactly. Oh. Look. You've already done so much for me that I didn't deserve. Hmm. Come, Rebecca. It's time for bed. Yes, say good night to your new friends. Good night. Good night. It's like it's it's about to get tense, so let's let's get out of here. <laughs> She's like leaving him to look like be nice. Make sure he doesn't ask for our daughter. <laughs> if you Which knew who I am, you would never have helped me. That's not true. This is what we Jews do. We tell and listen to stories. How stories connect us. Hmm. Tell me your story. Our stories connect us. Wow. Okay, hang on. I'm going to pause it really quickly before it gets started the story. We ran out of money. Okay. Our stories connect us. Tell me your story. It, what would happen, Familia, if we were to pay that kind of attention to one another? To instead of, instead of hearing something from someone and then jumping drastically to a conclusion, we, we just take the time to hear their story. Because the suffering of one person is the suffering of the whole. There's no such thing as uh, Asian suffering or the, like, the, you know, Middle Eastern suffering, American suffering, Mexican suffering, Brazilian suffering. Like, it's all suffering. We all suffer in the same ways. The story might be different. The context or the content of the story might be slightly different. But the story, the suffering is the same. And I love that he said here, our stories connect us, like, Tell me your story and let's see how he listens, how he pays attention to this man's story. They lost money, he said, and food. My little Rebecca, I could see her ribs through her skin. And Hedva, her eyes turned gray. There had been a wow. drought, so there was no work in town. I had a friend in Tiratana who was also in bad straits. We traveled south past the frame. And lied in wait along the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. We attacked a Jew who was traveling along. Pulled mm. him down from his horse, took all his money and all his clothes. He fought back, so Dishon knocked him down. Hit his head on a rock. I thought he was probably dead. Dishon was to take the Jew's belongings and sell them to bond traders in Anatoth. I was to ride north and sell the horse at a Roman outpost. <laughs> but I wasn't on for ten minutes when she reared up through me, broke my leg. Mm. I had to... I had to crawl on my elbows and forearms to the nearest town and beg for a ride back to Sikar, worse off than before. Mm. Now you know what you've done. The kind of man you've helped. Wow. The guilt, the self-guilt. day, I think about that Jew. Naked and alone, on mm. the road, possibly dead. I could be a murderer. Mm. He didn't die.
Somebody came along and helped him. How do you know? Melek. I know. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> he did not die. Mm. Why not? Why did you come all the way out here? Isn't everyone in town falling at your feet? The shepherd leaves the 99 on the mountain to search for the one that went astray. What do you want? Believe my words. Return to synagogue. Search Torah. I never learned to read. And listen to the word read aloud. And let it affect your heart. See what happens. <laughs> then what? Tell others. You know the crime I committed? In cold blood? You help someone like me? He would. Sleep on it. We'll be in town for one more day. Ah, she is asleep. We better go back into town before it gets too late. Yes. We never know what sort of men may lay in wait along the side of the road, huh? <laughs> too soon? <laughs> The humor. <laughs> you already knew. Aye, aye. Man. Sleep well tonight, my friend. <laughs> Thank you for having me. He's uh, too soon? <laughs> Oh man, this is brilliant. You're sure this is it? I don't know. This is the address I was given. Is that Sean Connery? I'll be honest up front. Okay. <laughs> I only have five extra bedrooms, and two of them are drafty. And I, uh, they usually sleep on the ground. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> are you sure this isn't a problem? I'm dying anyways. I don't need the house anymore. <laughs> Where is Jesus? <laughs> so casually. You certainly liven things up around here. You got me in a good mood just to fit in. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> Oh, the humor in this is beautiful. One of the rooms is haunted by my dead grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> what you is happening? He is? He's not afraid of ghosts. <laughs> I might be. I might be. Oh, man. One of the rooms is haunted. <laughs> oh. Really? What's wrong? Abba? <clears throat> What's wrong? My neck. Don't do that kind of thing. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Don't It was him. It was him. The music so subtle. Happy music. <laughs> What's 
so funny. Oh, I just know of a family that's having an unexpectedly good morning. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? You don't even have to be there to perform miracles. Don't sound so surprised, John. <laughs> One day you'll be given authority to do things I do. Even greater. Wait. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. Can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you sleep? Oh, well, it's, uh, he he's it like, wait, don't alive. ignore it. Say that again. I was a little scared by what Neraya said about this room being haunted. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not haunted. Why didn't you correct him when he said it was? I don't address everything at once with new converts, Big James. Oh! Well, I'm ready for breakfast. What did he say? <clears throat> I'm thankful before you, mm. living and enduring king. For you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. Pardon, excuse me. Oh. The invitation from the treasurer stands. And the priest. The priest is a high risk. Only if he wants to fight over whose Torah is better. But a great reward if he believes. And don't forget the leper colony. Where are you going? For a walk. We haven't made our plans yet. Whatever the plans will be, I'm sure it will be a long day. I need some time alone. You need protection. Enough with the protection. I'll be fine. I won't be long. But where can we find you? I'll find you. Seek. <laughs> and you will find. His riddles. It didn't sound like a riddle to me. If you look for him, we'll find him. That's not what I heard. Oh, yeah? What did you hear? I heard you looked and couldn't find him. <laughs> you guys lost him for practically a whole day, Matthew said. <laughs> they all turned to Matthew. He goes where he wants, when he wants. Yeah, well, we need to do better. Can you believe these guys? They dig in the mud and suddenly they're running the show. We just think we need some leadership, okay? Security concerns aside, we need a plan. No matter what happens today, the real question is where will we be after we leave here? We'll get to that. That's why James and I have outlined a plan for the next month. Month. Beginning oh, with a visit to the temple. His first appearance there since performing public signs. Oh. A visit to the scribes at Qumran. Two days preaching at Hebron. All done. He said we were excellent planners. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said planters. He <laughs> applauded our execution. <laughs> sent you to the farm to teach you a lesson. And we made an impression. Let's vote on it. Sure. Okay. All in favor of John and Big James's plan? <laughs> <laughs> I agree an agenda would be prudent. I'm not voting. Me either. Why not? Uh -uh. New guy. Okay, it doesn't matter what I think you should do or what you think. All opposed? Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I, for one, am not okay losing him for long periods of time. I'm not okay arguing about where we're going every day. So don't argue. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> simple solution. <laughs> simple solution to a simple problem. Then don't argue. to tell Jesus our plan. The group said to leave it alone. They also said he gets to make his own decisions. So, let's let him. Uh, why do you think he picked us to plant those fields? I'm starting to wonder about that. If I had known it was a Samaritan field. Jesus will sort it out. <laughs> Rabbi! Well, you couldn't wait, could you? I yes, <laughs> just uh, wanted to clear a few things up, if that's okay. By all means. The Jewish boys are far from home. Yes, as a matter of fact, we are. Shalom to you, too. Here's our traditional Jewish greeting for you. Don't lift a finger. That was a warning. Try it again, and 
See what happens. Quiet, Big James. Shalom to you too. You filthy dogs! I said quiet. Let us do something. And what would that achieve? Defending your honor. They reviled and humiliated you. They deserve to have bolts of lightning rain down and incinerate them. Yes, fire from the heavens. Fire. You said we could do this. <laughs> Say the word and it will happen. Why not? We knew we couldn't trust these people. We shouldn't have come here in the first place. They don't deserve you. Why do you think I had you work, Melek's field? What was I trying to teach you? Hmm. Here we go. To, to help? You think it was just to be more helpful? <laughs> or to be better farmers? It was to show you that what we're doing here will last for generations. What I told Fotina at the well, and what she then told so many others, it's sowing seeds that will have a lasting impact for lifetimes. Mm. Can you not see what's happening here? These people that you hate so much are believing in me without even seeing miracles. Uh. It's the message, the truth that we're giving them. And you're going to get in the way of that because a few people from a region you don't like were mean to you. That they're not worthy? What, you're so much better? You're more worthy? Well, let me tell you something. You're not. Ooh. That's the whole point. Oh. It's Ooh. why I'm here. Message! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rabbi. Mm. As we gather others, I need you to help show the way. Mm, mm, mm. To be humble. Mm. We will. Mm. Chills. You wanted to use the power of God <laughs> to bring down fire, <laughs> burn these people up. <laughs> well, it sounds a lot worse when you say it that way. <laughs> Sorry, familia, once again. ¿Qué pasó? You too. Yeah. Or like a storm on the sea. Sorry. Come on. Thunder exploding out of your chests at every turn. <laughs> In fact, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. James and John, the sons of thunder. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Today, it was not good. But strong passion can be a good thing when channeled for righteousness. I just may have to delay giving you that authority we discussed earlier. <laughs> or in smaller doses. <laughs> until you two calm down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> James. John, you look terrible. What happened? What happened is that James and John needed to be reminded we're here in Samaria to plant seeds, not to burn bridges. Master, we've brought a guest. We wanted to deliver an invitation to you personally. Rabbi, this is Gershon, the priest of Sikar. Ah, yes. I've heard a lot about you. And I've heard a lot about you. You have blessed this village beyond our deserving. The pleasure is ours to be here. But we cut word today it might be your last day in Sikar. Word travels fast. <laughs> indeed, Rabbi, indeed. Want to do us the great honor of giving a reading from the scroll of Moses in our humble synagogue? Of course. Times are so beautiful. Here they are. In proper order. Parashite in the beginning. Shemot. Names. Vakira. 
and he called. Bamidbar, in the desert, and Devran, words. I will leave you to make your selection in private. Thank you. Gershon. Uh, yes, Rabbi. Can you send in my disciple John, please? Of course. I'm going to need somebody to explain what those objects are in the comments section after this, please. <clears throat> the five books of Moses. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no more. They're missing out on so much. Yes. But we have to start somewhere. Mm. What do you think I should read? <sighs> Maybe... Moses striking the rock instead of speaking to it. Or Balaam hitting his donkey when he was mad. Don't torment me. How about when <laughs> Moses broke the tablets? Jonathan storming away from the dinner table. Samson striking down the men of Ashkelon. Oh, wait. They don't have those souls. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I really am open to suggestions for the reading. I couldn't. After today, after yesterday, I do not feel very much worthy. Who's worthy of anything? Mm. You? But no man, apparently. I'm a man, John. Ah, uh, ha, ha. And yet. And yet. I am who I am. Have you made your selection, Rabbi? Rabbi? Almost. Sorry. Uh, almost. They're getting restless out there. So, do you have a favorite passage from the first five? Um. I am who I am. Do you? I don't know. I like them all. You don't say. Is that different from I am that I am? I suppose I, I love the beginning. Hmm. I love how God simply spoke and, and the world came into being. Yes. As David wrote, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. You know, the Greeks use word to describe divine reason, what gives the world form and meaning. I like that. <laughs> hmm. And it is a favorite memory. Okay, so he's gonna read to people? I love the lighting in this temple. <laughs> Very subtle. A reading from the first scroll of Moses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word. And the earth was void and without form. And the word was with God. And the darkness covered the face of the deep. And the word was God. Hmm. Then God said, let there be light. 
There was light. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Hmm. Ah, okay. Excellent. I'm gonna let the credits roll. Um, while we talk about this, that was, that was great. That was a great intro to this, to this story or to season two. Uh, a lot of really hilarious moments. Um, good job on the writer's parts to throw in a little humor in there, sort of make it, make it a little lighter, right? Uh, we've seen so many versions of this, I'm, I'm sure, or heard so many different versions of, of this story. Um, I've heard these mostly when I was a, when I was a kid in, in church at, the, at a Catholic church. Um, so it, it's, it's very different to hear it or to see it this way, in, in this way. Um, I do have a couple, I made a, a couple of notes here on some things that I noticed. Um, but let me know, Familia, what did you rate this first episode? of season two in, in Archie's or in hearts, how many hearts or Archie's do you give this, uh, this beautiful story here is told by, by the people at angel studios. Um, and while you do that, I just wanted to point out this one thing. So it says, uh, heaven and earth will pass, but my words are eternal. What does that mean? What does that mean? So I'm going to leave you with a couple of questions to answer in the comment section. Uh, below and hopefully you all can have a conversation with one another excuse me a conversation with one another and and see how different your your thinking is and how different your perception is and it's okay that a perception might be a little slightly different um, I just want you to see how you how you all connect okay um, heaven and earth will pass but my words are eternal um, what does that mean exactly what does that mean to you specifically? Um, a time, there's always, I, I, I caught also that there's always a time to discuss things, right? When the young lady's father was like so adamant that he was like wanting to talk and he's got a lot to say, right? He, Jesus very wisely said, you know, we've both had, have had a really long day. Why don't we get some rest practically? And then we'll talk about it when, once, once we're rested, right? Because things might be said that you didn't want to say, and or things might be heard that weren't said, right? Like somebody might say something and you might just get snappy because you heard it differently because you filtered it through your anger or you filtered it through your frustration. You filtered it through your tiredness. And so you heard something that maybe wasn't said or you yourself are tired. You speak something and not realize that there's a tone of like, there's a frustrated tone underneath what you're saying. And you may not really mean anything bad by it but the fact that you're tired makes it sound like you are saying something something bad right so um th there's that I, I love that he wanted to take a time um and then when he was finally spoke to the father to the to the young lady's father the, the man said look i have to be on my journey and i don't have time to be unclear so i'm going to be clear and then he said what he felt and he sort of stopped himself because he was going to say something offensive towards, towards Jews or towards people from Nazareth. And he stopped himself. And I want you to, if you get a chance to replay that scene and watch Jesus's re re response to it, not even reaction, watch his response to it. He didn't get offended. He was paying so much attention to him. He was fully present uh, listening to this man's word. And he thanked him for his honesty he thanked him for his honesty. He didn't say, wait, 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 what do you mean by people from Nazareth? What's wrong with people from Nazareth? And then go down that rabbit hole, right? He thanked him for his honesty. And we could all use a little bit of that. You know, we can all use a little bit of that when, especially when somebody comes and, and attacks you or says something offensive to you, we could, 
we could use that to be fully present and pay attention to what the person is saying and give all of our attention to the person that is saying this way you're the part of you that registers the part of you that records uh offensiveness or even that records flattery as well isn't isn't there it's not recording you're fully present in in the moment and respond in that way um so yeah th those are my questions for you all i want to thank you all so much for joining me there is another way for you to all to be in, in in touch with with one another we have uh, angela just posted a little link to our discord uh, server where we offer prayer to people from all all around the world um if you are in need of prayer we ask that you join us there and request your prayer there there's also conversations about food and recipes we share photos with each other we share stories with each other and we share our journeys together um we've had people who are going to apply for a job and they say please pray for us we'll pray for that person for uh for for them to 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 get the job if if that's what they're what they're after and um and then we also celebrate with you so you can let us know your accomplishments or your achievements or the things that the, the things that God did for you in your life. And we celebrate with you. We're truly a family. Uh, it's definitely not a place, even though it's called Discord, it's definitely not a place for Discord. It's not a place to argue or to go in there and to, to tell people that they're wrong for believing something or to impose what you believe. It's just people getting together uh, in the name of Jesus and, um, and, and sharing that love that we are told to share. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, please join us on, on Discord. The link is also in the description down below. Um, season, uh, episode two. Episode two is going to be coming up soon. I'm going to post it ahead of time like I did this one so that you all can be ready. Um, I'm thinking about the, sa the same time. If that works for all of you, let, let us let us know in the comment section. But uh, I, I think this, this time really does work yeah, out really well. About 200 people. Yeah, so. over 200. So thank you all so much for taking the time to join us. I see a couple of faces here that I hadn't seen in a good while. So Juline, thank you for joining us. So happy to see you here. Um, we, I saw uh, Elvia on here. Thank you so much. And then um, Anne Horden was on here as well. So we hope that you all are doing well. Haven't heard from you all in, in quite some time. And I know that some of you had questions. I saw some of the questions, some people that were asking about the non-Christian title. Um, it, please try your best not to get so attached to that title. Um, it is just, uh, it is just a title. I, you know, it does not mean antichrist. I saw somebody say <laughs> something. It does not mean that it doesn't mean atheist. It doesn't mean non-believer. It's more of a non-Christian for Christ. I'm still trying to figure out what it really means to be a Christian. Many of you have your own definitions of what that means. And I'm not here to start um, any controversy or anything like that. I'm definitely not doing this for likes. If anything, I think I've lost a lot of more people uh, with with this and, and I'm completely fine. It, this is really about me being true to myself and being honest with you all. I can't uh, I can't continue to be some do something or say that I'm something when I'm not even sure what it means to be that, especially when I have so many people telling me, particularly like, for example, about the show, telling me like that uh, so many bad negative things about it, that it's not, you know, scripturally accurate and that it's, you know, something evil and all these other things that I'm like, just going to take into consideration. That's all. But, uh, but I thank you for all you, for all of you who are understanding of, about this, uh, this non-Christian title. Um, and thank you so much for your love and support and for continuing to support this channel and for continuing to allow me to be a part of your journey. Um, and for having an interest in, in, in our journey, um, in Erika and my journey, um, I mean no offense. I love you all um, so much, and I'm definitely grateful to have you all here and to call you all familia, to call you all family. Um, we're, we're just figuring this all out together. If you're interested in knowing more, I ask a lot of deep questions in the the communities tab on my channel. So if you go over to my channel and you click on the communities tab, you can click on, on any of the questions, many questions that I've asked and feel free to answer them all or some of them, whichever you feel comfortable, there will be definitely more questions uh, about, about this. I am definitely still a student of Christ. I'm still a follower of Christ. Um, I'm still learning what it truly means to be a Christian before I can actually adopt that, that title. Uh, but I'm definitely not an atheist and I'm definitely not um, anti Christ. Um, um, I'm not anti-Christian either. Um, I just have a lot of questions. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to ask those questions without uh, any any without any harm or foul. Um, 
and and I think a lot of a lot of what was taught in this first episode of the second season can be applied to what I would love uh, you all to do is just to be a little bit more understanding, to be calm in your in your reaction to my my title or to that title, um, and to practice a little bit of patience as well and understanding. And and if you are truly uh, wanting to make a case for Christ, you're welcome to. Um, just, I think, take the lesson from here and learn to plant seeds, you know, plant little seeds. Um, also, he said something, I, I liked something that he said there. He said, you can't, uh, he, that he doesn't reveal everything all at once to, especially to new new converts, um, which means he, he doesn't want to overwhelm people. So, you know, let that be a lesson as well, not to overwhelm people. Uh, luckily for me, I want to say think luckily for you, but not luckily for you. Luckily for me, I have uh, I've learned not to run away. So this is not something that I'm running away from like I did previously when I was a Catholic. Um, but I am sort of hitting, as Mama Bear says, hitting that pause button on what it means to be a Christian and uh, and really, really just getting down to the nitty gritty, you know, and 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 learning as much as I possibly can about this Christ fella. Um, unfortunately, he's not currently here for us to really, really learn as these gentlemen are learning uh, uh, in the story. Um, so all we have is the writings and not even his own writings, but what other people said about him. And so it would have been nice to have had uh, some kind of writing from him specifically telling us what he expects us so that we can hear it in the exact words that he said and not someone recalling what he said and then having their questions motive because, you know, Matthew was like, Mike, my story will be precise. Like, trust me, it will be precise. Everyone else, we're not exactly sure. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to push any, any controversy buttons here, but, but um, it would have been nice. Right. And so I'm learning from, from the stories and I'm also learning from you all. So I appreciate you all taking the time to patiently uh, teach, teach me um, what, how you see, how you see things. Right. I mean, there's only one teacher, but thank you for sharing your perspective with me. And your perspectives are all going to be taken into consideration. However, I also have to be true to my own self and be true to, to my experience, my direct relationship that I have with, with, with God. And uh, I cannot abandon that. I just, I just can't. And so part of that is me stepping back and saying, I'm not going to abandon the relationship that I already have to trade it off for the, the experience that someone else has or for the lack of experience that someone else has who says, hey, that's not my experience, so that can't be your experience. And I'm not interested in putting God in a box and, and to dictate in your life what uh, what God can and cannot do for you or, or can or cannot do in your life. I'm definitely not here to limit God and say that God can or can't do this or he won't do this because scripture says he won't. So that's where I am. I mean, no offense. I'm not trying to offend anyone. But I do trust, like Elvis says, yes, I do trust and I follow, I follow Christ. I do. Um, when I look at, at, uh, at the church, I question and, and I question it in a healthy way uh, because there's a lot of ideas out there that I just cannot stand behind. And if that's what it means to be Christian, if it means hurting another person with my words or being uh, direct and, and, uh, and, judging them or condemning them or telling anybody that they're going to hell for whatever behavior they're doing. I'm not interested in any of that. What I am interested in is in spreading the love that was given uh, to me, um, that is put was put in my heart and spreading it and sharing it with you all. And in hopes that you allow um, not God, not Christ to come into your heart, but to let Christ out of your heart. If he's already in your heart and he's transformed it, I want him to be let out of your heart. And I want him to transform the lives of others through you. Um, so I'm not interested in religious practices or, or traditions. Um, um, and I'm not interested in creating new traditions or creating a new idea or a new philosophy or a new belief or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just interested in sharing my story with you all. And I, and I hope that you all are willing to listen because what we learned here is that stories connect us. And if you take the time to listen to someone's story, you can better understand your own story um, because you'll see the mistakes of others. My grandfather used to tell me that, that we learn from experience. And the beautiful thing about learning from experience is that it's not limited to our own experience. Uh, we can also learn from the experience of others, which will allow us to learn things a lot faster and, to, and prevent um, us from falling into dangers a lot faster. 